Hey folks, Ray DC America.com here. Today I've got seven new things about the new Wahoo Roam. Uh, now this video is kind of a two-parter. There is the first part, well it's all one big video, but there's like split into two parts. Uh, the first part is I'm gonna talk about the seven new things on the Roam, kind of what you need to know, what's new about it. In the second half, I'm gonna do a hands-on, just sort of walk through like on my handlebars, just pushing some buttons and showing you how it all works. Uh, but if you want all the parts in one big textual like thing, uh, check out my full in-depth review. It's, I don't know, like five or 10,000 words long and a crap ton of pictures, like at least a hundred photos. And it talks through all this stuff and more of my thoughts than I could fit on this particular video. And I have a lot of thoughts about this unit. Uh, now with that, let's go ahead and dive right into it. Number one is this has a new color screen on it. It's actually the same size as the existing element screen. This one here on the existing element is actually set a little bit deeper in, or at least it looks at that one is, whereas this one is, is completely flush across, um, which in theory, I think is supposed to reduce more of the glare and whatnot. I haven't had any problems with, with either one, to be honest, with glare. Um, so it's not really an issue. The new color screen is eight colors, according to like the official specs of what it is. Uh, though in reality, you get more colors than just those core eight colors. For example, you see purple in certain emojis and other colors are used here and there, like there's teal in some of the uh, max power charts, for example. Uh, but for the most part, you're gonna see yellows on uh, portions of roadways. You're gonna see reds, uh, like when shutting it down. You'll see orange in the Strava page. Uh, it kind of sticks to a, a couple core colors, blue for water. Next is number two, which is routable maps. Now the key difference between this and there it is, this one here, is that while both of these had maps on them, or what you thought were maps, they weren't really maps. In the case of the element and the element both, basically it was like a sketch drawing of the world, uh, but it didn't have any context. So it'd be kind of like if I drew on a napkin and put it on the table and told you to route on it, you wouldn't really be able to route on that drawn napkin because you don't know what the road names are, for example, or anything else versus the Roam has that actual legit information. That allows you to go ahead and turn left on Maple Street and right on Main Street and all the kind of goodness that you want. The downside though with the Roam and routing is there is a massive list of if but type statements. Um, if you have Strava routes, you don't get turn by turn routing. If you use the Wahoo Companion app, you can't route in kind of a multi-point loop. You have to go ahead and route like from point A to point B. If you use a companion app, you don't get elevation. If you're using retrace route, you don't get certain things. If you're using back to home, you don't get certain things. Like it just, it kind of goes on and on, which is one of my main gripes here. Now, Wahoo says they're gonna fix some of that. They're promising that by the end of May, they'll have Strava turn by turn routing enabled on it. I think that's incredibly optimistic. Uh, they're also saying by the end of June, they'll have elevation data on the unit itself. Uh, because right now, if you route using their companion app, then you won't get any elevation for your uh, kind of upcoming climbs and whatnot. I think that day is totally realistic. Now, if you're finding this video useful, I definitely appreciate it if you go ahead and whack that like button down there at the bottom. It only takes you a split second, but it does help out the channel and the video quite a bit. Number three on it is the ability to reroute. Um, again, that's a big ticket item compared to the previous element, element um, or the bolt. You couldn't reroute. So in the past, when you went off of your course, uh, it would just give you like a little compass directional arrow to get back to um, your existing course versus now it'll tell you to turn left on Maple Street and right on and all the usual stuff you'd expect, um, just like in a car GPS when you go off routes. Number four on the list is the ability to get back to start. Now this effectively takes some of the rerouting kind of engine stuff and applies it to just normal routing that you wanna do. So one of the tasks that you can do, if at any point in time you want to just get home or back to start, you can go ahead on the unit itself and route back to start, which will get you back to your starting point in the fastest possible route. So if you imagine like a big lollipop and at the top of the lollipop, you gave up on life and decided to go back home, it would go straight down as opposed to continuing around the circle uh, back to home. So that is a simple, back to start kind of routing, which goes right into number five on the list, which is route to start, different. In that case, you are more than one kilometer, that's the detail that's important, one kilometer away from your starting location of your route itself, uh, and you want to get to that location. So an example of this being that you're meeting some friends somewhere and they said the route starts here, you've downloaded the route onto the Roam, and you want to go ahead and get directions from your home or wherever you started your ride to that point. Which gets us to the next item, which is saved waypoints. Um, and so in this case, you can go ahead and save certain waypoints that you've been to on the unit itself, uh, and that goes ahead and it basically allows you to route to them at any one point in time. So for example, say I'm at home, I can save that waypoint there, and that is my home. Now the downside is it lists it by the street name. So uh, it's not always correct either. Like in my case, it just kind of picks some random streets nearby that weren't actually my street name. Uh, and so I have to know what that random street name was because I can't edit it. That said, it does work really well. You just go ahead and select it from the list on the device itself. And then it uses the turn by turn routing to get you there. Getting to the next one, which is retracing the ride back. 
Uh, so in this case, let's pretend you do an out and back type scenario and you've gone out on the ride and you wanna retrace the exact same route coming back. It'll give you kind of the inverse directions to get back. Uh, there's a couple caveats there. The most notable one is it doesn't seem to honor any of the one-way road type scenarios. I used this in one case on a ride uh, that did have one-way roads and it basically just plowed right back down those one-way roads the wrong direction. So you're gonna have to kind of freestyle a bit. Last on our list of new items is that Wahoo has added a partnership with Single Tracks and Mountain Bike Project for routes. Um, now that is not for like mapping data like you saw on the edge side of things. That's for routes on their platform similar to like Komoot or uh, Ride with GPS and whatnot where you can take those routes and download them to your unit itself. So definitely a bit more of a focus on mountain biking coming with this. Uh, and I believe that's now available actually for all these devices, not just the Roam itself. With that note, let's go ahead and head outside. I'm gonna give you a walkthrough of kind of hands-on on the unit itself, this unit, not my phone, uh, of all these new features. This is the Wahoo screen that you know and love. You can of course change the number of data fields by pressing these up and down buttons right here. When you configure data fields, you're basically configuring uh, a set number of fields up to 11 fields, and then you can change the number of fields that you see at that moment exactly by just pressing these up and down buttons. So you can see here I go all the way up. And I've got I've only configured the uh, seven or so fields on this one. Press page to go to the next one. Now you can see the full 11. Exact same thing again. I can go down to just one in a blank spot, or I can go all the way up to 11 by pressing this right there. Um, and then here I am, the map view itself. Now, of course, in the map view, as I go in and out, just using the same zoom buttons, it'll redraw the map. The black line is where I've been thus far. And then I go all the way out and you can see, uh, it's impressive how much it'll fit in there. Like it's not too shabby. You'll see Mr. Hugo over there. So still drawing the map, still drawing. Of course, this is a super dense map. Uh, this is Amsterdam, Southern Amsterdam, kind of Northern Amsterdam up here. Vondel Park, if you're familiar, right up there in the corner to give you some kind of some context. Hugo is just someone on live tracking. I don't know who they are, but they've got their public settings turned on. So therefore I can see them. Get back to where I am right now. Uh, you can see it's much quicker at this zoom rate right here. We'll go ahead and uh, hit page again. And you can see here's a nearby segment. So we'll Strava segments just down around the corner there. Uh, these are each one of the different struggle segments. Page one more time here. Come on, page. There we go. And back that to the same page I started with. On the left-hand side here, we got one button right there to go ahead and get into the menu. Uh, the backlight settings, this is one of the new things. So on uh, auto is meaning using the ambient light sensor on the top. I think it's right there. Um, that goes ahead and detects whether it's light or dark out. So if you go through a tunnel, it'll turn on that automatically. I had this turned off uh, for some battery testing. So that's why it's off. You can see locations outdoor. The LEDs that you see right here, I can change it from speed to power, uh, or heart rate, sorry, or turn it off. Uh, and if I go down here, I can save my location. So talking about one of the new features, I click save right now, and this just saves it. Now this is kind of one of the challenges, I do find a lot of unknown roads. And so I'm standing by the side of a road and it doesn't know what it is. That's my location save, and I can't rename any of these either. So you're kind of stuck with that. Um, here's all the sensors that I have on there. System info to open that up. Uh, see where things stand, and then also uh, planned workouts. So I can open up the planned workouts, ones that you synchronize from different training services, and then here's some sessions that they've already preloaded from their sponsor team there, uh, the no longer Team Sky team. Um, so going back to here, I wanna kinda show you some of the routing bits. So go back onto the routing page. Come on. There we go, routing page, there we go. Okay, route, and then here, um, so I think 13 minutes ago, the last time I did this, retrace ride, this will go ahead and just retrace my ride back to start. So if I click this right there, select this, uh, you're gonna see it'll go ahead and it's loading the route now. Uh, the loading route time generally takes about the same as it does on Garmin's newer units. Sometimes it's slower, uh, sometimes it's faster. I'd say for like shorter distance stuff, this is just as fast, though right now it's taking a long time for only being like a kilometer away. Um, and then you can see here the route, if I pull this up, you can see the different street names the way uh, 0.6 miles to go, so a kilometer. And then here is the street names and the churns that I have on each one of those. So we'll go back here. I'm gonna uh, go back to route one more time and end this route, sorry. Uh, yep, I'm gonna show you some of the other options here. Back into route again, take me to. This is where you can browse the map itself. So you can see here's a bunch of saved street names I have at different places and some of them are unknown roads, unfortunately. Click location on map. And then I can just move this around by using this bottom button right there. So I can go over here. Uh, I can go up a little bit now like this and I can say, boom, I want to select this location. I can also zoom in now if I want to. So we'll just zoom in, make sure nicely on that road. And uh, we'll go down a little bit just to be really, you can see now the road name is displayed right here. Uh, and if I go up there, you'll see, see you'll find that road. Nope, that's an unnamed road right there. Go up a little bit higher. 
and it looks like it's trying to find that row name. So in any case, we'll just choose that one for the fun of it. Click select, and now it's loading this up here. I said select. Come on, select the road. There we go. Maybe. There we go, now it's loading the route. Uh, and you know, some people ask on review why I said things were slow, and this is what I mean about that. Like you select things and you wait, you're not really sure if it did it or not. Uh, it's just not that fast. Uh, and you can see loading route right here. And I'll go ahead and I'll do that and I'll just skip ahead to when it does that. Okay, so it loaded that route up here. Uh, and I'm gonna show you part of the problem I have right now. Uh, number one, I can't scroll down to see where this is going. Number two, the route's just frankly wrong. Uh, there's no reason for me to go all the way down here. If you look at where it wants me to go, go all the way out here and back around again, I'm standing on a bike path that can go straight out there in less than 50 meters. Um, and then you can see where it wants me to go is way, you can see the chevrons down there. I can't even go and see that far because of the way the the map is unfortunately that heart by the way is my saved location uh, i'm going to show you some of the stuff in terms of how i have save routes so go back to route here pull up this one called tulip ride uh, this one actually is from the office we'll go with that one and then click select now these are routes i pulled from strava in the case of strava there's no turn by turn routing so it's going to pull that route up here okay the route went ahead and finished uploading about a minute all in if i click on route though this is all you get for a strava route so you don't get any detail of turn left and right you just simply get basically a breadcrumb trail that I can eventually find out somewhere here. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, I can't because I can't orient things. I can't move the map around like you can on other units. So uh, I have to go find this route by myself because it is within a kilometer of a starting point versus if I chose a route that was further away, it would give me instructions to get there. Instead, I wanna show you some of the app stuff because this is where like Wahoo really does do very well. Uh, I'm gonna zoom this out. There we go. And there we go. Okay. so. In this case right here, uh, I'm gonna choose a route, and this is kind of like the stuff that they are so good at. I'm gonna do take me to, and I'm just gonna pick a place. So I'm gonna be like, boom, let's go, let's go Amstel Park, just really quickly. There we go, simple, select route, loading route, boom, routes load over here, I'm off and running. Like that is super fast, and that's something, you cannot do that on a Garmin anywhere near that fast. Like I did that in however many seconds it just took, like what, eight seconds? On a Garmin, that would take you many minutes uh, to do that using the phone app back and forth. So that stuff is awesome, that works really, really well. Choose route again. Here I can uh, pull from history, I can take past rides, for example. Um, sync from web means goes ahead and it pulls it from one of these web services there. Import file, uh, you can go and import a fit GCX or uh, GPX file. Retrace the current ride, obviously gets you back to the start of your current ride, uh, so no real surprises there. Otherwise, everything else is identical on the Wahoo Roam. Uh, in terms of like hands-on stuff, it's all what you'd expect from the Bolt and the Element. Okay, there you go, a complete look at the Wahoo Roam here. Uh, now, the thing is, like, I've been using this for, I don't know, a month and a half now? So I've been using it for quite a while. I've got a lot of rides on it. Uh, and, you know, it's a good overall bike computer from a bike computer standpoint. It's just not a good navigational bike computer, which is sort of the whole stick with this. Um, so it's something that I think eventually Wahoo will get there, just not, like soon and I'm, I'm worried that at that first price point, $379, uh, 379 bucks, that's 80 bucks more than the 530 which does more than this routing wise and it's uh, only 20 bucks cheaper than the 830 which also does more than this. Also my camera's about to get run over so one second. Anyways, price-wise, as I was saying, it's a tough battle. And I get it, like people love the Wahoo uh, platform for what it is in terms of simplicity, and that makes sense, and visibility, um, and that makes sense, and all the easy use stuff, that I am totally with you on that. I'm just not with you at that, this price point. Like, that's just too expensive for what it is in today's state. Um, I'm looking for, I wanna see what they can do in this. I wanna see the company like add more features. I wanna see them solidify timelines around this device in terms of navigational bits. Uh, I know they've talked about Strava in May and I know they've talked about elevation in June, uh, but those are really just two pieces of a much larger puzzle. Anyways, if you found this review interesting, go ahead and like that like button at the bottom there or the subscribe button down there as well. There is plenty more sports technology awesomeness. This is not the end of like spring sports technology technology releases by any stretch of the imagination, so you want to know about them as soon as they hit. Have a good one.